Welcome to this second video which involves the preparation of tutorial chapter 6 in the Expression web book. If you've watched the first video and or prepared the information, I stopped on page 270 where I was about to type in the data into the table at the bottom of the web page that you hopefully see on the screen right now beginning with the words winter is special and having the bus routes going from New York to Washington all the way down to Philly to New York. I'm going to start now and I went ahead by the way and type this in after I cut off the last video so if you need to stop the video or pause it and type in the data on the bottom of page 270 go ahead and do so. Don't worry about the color background, the bold letters, just basically get the text inside the computer. And I'll pause for just a minute. Hopefully now you have typed in the information. Again, if you haven't, pause the video. And I'll continue now with page 271. And we'll do some special things to this table by looking at the process for inserting and adding rows and cells of information, which you can also do if you've had the Excel spreadsheet experience. If you look on page 272, you will see the text that will be inserted. And the reason it's in bold letters is so that you see what is being inserted, not that it has to appear that way on the page. So back on page 271 in the process, you have the possibility of either using the big menu at the top of the screen where it says table, and that's what the book does. So if you're very literal with the book, you can go to the table, choose insert or delete as you need to and get these choices. You can also click inside the table and right click and go inside these same areas and do various insert and delete options. I'm going to go with right clicking inside the table because it will be a little bit easier for me to manipulate in the interest of time with the video. So I'm clicking on the first cell of the second row where it's got the word from. Just click anywhere in there and the little tracer lines, the little box will select that particular cell. Now what I will do right here is to, we're going to insert a row below the word from that will say New York Boston instead of New York Washington. So basically I'll right click and again you can choose the table menu as the book did if you like. I'm going to choose insert and because I'm going, I'm going horizontally I'm going to choose row below because I want information to be below the word from. Wherever my cell pointer is, if I choose above or below it's going to be relative to that particular cell pointer location. So I'll choose row below. You can always undo or control Z if you make a mistake. A new row is placed there and if I click there I can type in the information on page 272, New York, Boston. You can tab to go from one place to the next. 7.10 a.m. I'm talking through this so no one will think, the beginner will not think that I have paused the video by accident. Some people get a little nervous about that. And I'm typing all the way across to now N34 and hopefully I have this information typed in correctly. Alright, going back to page 271, I'll look at step number 5 and I'm going to click the cell containing the word Washington in the very first from column. So there's Washington right there. And if you look on page 272, we're going to put a row of information above the word Washington. So again, clicking inside the word Washington, I'll right click, choose insert, and this time I'll choose row above. The computer, the, not, not the computer, the book is doing this just for instructional purposes. I'll click row above, and I'll have an extra row of cells above the word Washington and I'll type the contents of page 272 again, Boston, New York, spelling it correctly I hope. Men don't multitask as well as far as typing and talking at the same time. And the computer book purposely has left out the, some of the numbers in the percent off price part, so just be aware of that. That will be changed in a very few minutes and this row ends with B33. Finally, at the bottom of the table, I'm now in step number, <coughs> excuse me, in bottom of step number eight, bottom of the table. I'll click at Philly, and I can do one of two things actually right here. I could, I'm going to insert a row below Philly, so I could do the same thing here. The book doesn't say it this way, but I could choose insert row below, which would give me a brand new row at the bottom if I wanted to do that. I'm going to scroll down here so you can see the table a little better. I'll do this one more time just so you can see it. If I wanted to choose insert row below, I could do that. What the book actually does is it has you tab all the way across and what happens with spreadsheets and with the table in this case as well, what will happen 
is if I tab in this last row, if I hit tab again after going into this last row, P122, that new row will be automatically inserted at the bottom anyway. And again, I'm typing in the stuff on page 272, the word Cleveland, all the way across. And again, I'm talking so you won't think the video has lost sound. Sometimes we assume that, or I assume that. And I hope I've typed this with no mistakes. If I've made mistakes, just correct me and you do it the right way. And now I have the information in there. If by chance I accidentally hit tab and caused a brand new row to go in there, I can always undo it or control Z to take care of it. So the information is now typed in. Now, this is still difficult to read. A lot of times we assume because we developed the table. Sometimes we'll make the assumption that everyone can read it because we're familiar with it and more often than not it isn't the case so instead of having these little thin tracer lines surrounding each of the cells we're going to do some editing to this entire table once again and again you can choose table properties for the entire table or you can choose cell properties <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do just so I can select everything I'm going to click over here in the top left corner in the cell that says winter is special first cell first row just click anywhere in there and you can select all the cells by holding your mouse down, dragging across as if you were selecting words to bold or underline them, and this will select all of the cells. And again, you can go to the table menu or you can right click, as I'm going to do, and choose cell properties. A similar dialog box will come up very much like the table properties, except the specificity will be for cells instead. I'm going to choose, as the book says in step 3, page 272, the size will be three and I'm going to actually preview this for you in a minute unlike the book for the color I'm going to choose something different I'm going to choose a pink purple or fuchsia as I call it color I know the book doesn't say this but I want to make a point here instead of clicking OK you can click apply which lets you preview what it looks like ahead of time I wanted to do this to let you see the effect instead of just doing what the book says and that's all if I change the size of these borders to 10 and hit apply again let me just let you see what's happening you see how thick the particular cell borders are I wanted you to see what this meant instead of just doing the direction for the sake of doing it so the actual directions say to make the size 3 which I'll hit apply again so you can see what's happening it's much thinner much neater and in step 4 they're asking for the navy color which is the darkest blue on the first row and again you don't have to click apply I'm doing this again just to show you what's going to happen and each individual cell has a selection right here now notice what happened in my particular case I didn't get all the cells apparently but I'm going to go ahead and click OK just to let you see that you could do this again I can select these last two rows and I can take care of this just fine by doing the same thing again I'll go to cell properties and I'll choose this same thing again click OK and I should be able to handle this and hopefully this has continued so that you can see what's going on with it. I went ahead and I selected the cells that I left out earlier. Bottom line, you want to make sure that all the cells have the thickness or size of three for the borders and the color navy blue there. We can also not only insert rows as we did a minute ago, we can also add or delete columns as we need to. We're going to go in right now and we're going to put in an additional column here. And we can do that and what's going to happen here, I'm going to click anywhere in the two column. Now notice when I'm selecting here, this is the column I'm referring to. I can go to any cell in this particular column. I'm following the directions on page 274. I'll right click and I'll do insert but instead of getting rows above or rows below, I'm going to get columns to the left or columns to the right. I'm going to choose columns to the right. And what this will do relative to where I clicked my mouse, it will insert columns in that place. So when I choose columns to the right, it's going to make a very small column over here on the right between the words to and leave. And if I didn't like that, I could always undo it or as they're saying in this exercise I can actually click in the column that I just created and do delete and it says delete columns and I can make it go away now apparently somehow 
I must have, let me see what I did here. I want to make sure I delete that particular column. They were just basically just showing you how to do it. And I'm not sure exactly what happens here. I'm, I'm, I'm having a crazy moment for some reason. I'm clicking in one of the cells of the new column and I'm choosing delete column. So hopefully that's going to take care of it for me. For some reason it's going to delete my column that says from and I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not having a a good moment. That's okay though because sometimes that could happen to you. See so what happens if I select everything. It shouldn't make any difference. But just be aware of exactly what's going on in the exercise. I selected all the columns just to be safe. If you wanted to delete a row such as the Cleveland row that we did earlier you can click anywhere in the last row and you can choose delete row. They're just showing you the functionality of what you can do here. Just make sure that you're matching what's in the book as far as the entries that you want. Another feature, and you'll notice that purposely earlier the 25 was not typed into these last three cells in the percent off price column. There's a way very rapidly, if you've got a lot of entries that are the same, you can do a duplication. I hope you can hear me over the noise that's in my hallway. Sometimes that happens. I'll try not to. I'll try to be louder as necessary. I'm going to click on the 25, drag and select the cells below it. I'm on page 275 if you're looking with me, and I can do something called table fill. It's like filling a cell when you're doing copying a formula, and I can choose. It recognizes that I went vertically down, so I'll choose fill down, and those empty cells will be filled with the 25 entry. We can do all kinds of things to this. We can change the column widths. We can let them spread out like they have now. There are a lot of possibilities you can do with these various table entries. For example, if I go to the view menu, there's also a special toolbar, page 276, that's especially earmarked for tables. And I'll go ahead and check that. And that table toolbar will be on the bottom row right above in my case right above where it says site view and info new and you've got a lot of information that works with tables now if as long as the table is selected that toolbar will be active if I click away from the table those entries will gray out mine happened to be active because I had the table clicked as I did the view toolbars option again page 276 I can just hover across each of these entries in the table and it will tell me what those particular functions are. I'm going to choose the one that says distribute columns evenly so there'll be a nice little smoothness to it and not have all this extra space. Distribute columns evenly is, and I have to locate this also, sometimes I'm not as good at visualizing this as other people are. Some of you probably would, would find this faster than I would. But if I were to click anywhere in one of the cells, like the word from, I'm just going to click in one of the cell entries from, I have the option of choosing, and, and I can drag, I, I want to select a whole row right here, so I'm going to click in the word from, and I'm going to drag all the way across with my mouse so that I select only that row containing the word from and I will go in and I will choose the option that says distribute columns evenly and what's going to happen when I click that you'll notice looking at the table that it will make those particular entries or those columns the widths of them basically the same it didn't affect the one called winter is special in the same way because we wanted to do something else with that later on and if we don't like the way it looks, some people will like the way it looks because they'll, they, they'll like the left alignment. Notice that in the words from New York, New York, New York, etc., to Boston, Washington, that everything's lined up to the left. We can make this to where the appearance of the text can be a little different also if we want to have things on separate lines. For example, if I want a percent off price and I want a trip number to be on different lines, I can do that very easily by just clicking inside the cell and right now on page 277 what I'll do is I'll click between the word off and the word price inside the cell and if you want to have a small amount of space instead of hitting enter as I'm doing right here 
You can also do something by holding the shift key and enter and that will make a much smaller space between the words. And if I needed to delete any space in there, I could I could also do that. I'll do the same thing with trip number. Again, depending on where you click it, when I do shift enter, you'll notice there's a space maybe right in front of the word number and I can just delete that so that the word trip and the word number line up on that left edge of that cell border. Not only can I divide the words up, I can also take this line that says winter is special and instead of having these five blank cells across the top, I can actually combine cells together. A lot of ways to do that. I can go in, for example, if I wanted to go into this winter is special cell, I can go right at the right, right, right along the border between the two cells and, and what happens if I hover over that, you'll, you'll see a double headed arrow that's white pointing from left to right and I can actually drag this and I can move this toward the left and make it narrow or I can move it all the way to the right and if I hover over this it will give me the column width and we want to make sure it's about 200 pixels for right now and you just have to gaze this. You can also do this with one of the menus but this particular instruction is allowing us to do this manually so just get approximately where you are. If it's not exactly 200 that's perfectly okay I could undo it if I didn't like it. I could do Control Z to undo it. And as I said before, if I wanted to right click inside that first cell and choose Cell Properties, I can get very specific here. And I can type in an actual number where I've got Specify Width. I can have that checked. And I'll make it a little bit larger by typing in 100 more than what it normally is. So it makes it a little bit bigger that way. I can even go in and make that one big cell and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to select Winter is Special, go all the way across the row to select all the cells in that first row and I'll choose an option in the table toolbar that's called Merge Cells. You're basically combining all the cells into one large one. Now sometimes on these menus because of my eyesight I'm not finding where they are. It's the sixth one from the left. If I click Merge Cell what will happen? The Winter is Special will just be one great big cell where all these divisions are not there and I've got a sneaky feeling that will probably at some point maybe center that word later on. This was the step that I did in page 278 merging the cells at the very bottom of that page. In the case of the cell containing the number 15 on page 279 I'm going to click right there and I'm going to se select both the cell 15 and the cell 20, just drag and select them. And what I'm going to do right there is hit the delete key. That will delete the numbers. It doesn't delete the cells, but it deletes the numbers, the text. And if I were to merge those two cells together while they're selected, and again, you can right click and merge the cells. I think you can. I would think you could do it. Yes. Or you can go up to the top and choose the toolbar. Any way that you can find to get the word merge cells. So I can merge them vertically as well. So I have one great big tall cell, so to speak, right there. And I'll type in the, the word TBD to be determined. And that way you can have multiple sizes of cells within different columns. Hopefully this is not too confusing for you. Just read the directions and they should be self-explanatory. As predicted on page 280, as I said earlier, I'm going to be centering winter is special since that's one great big merge cell. I can just click in there and I can go in and I can, can center these by just clicking the center button of the top just like the center is in Microsoft Word. It'll center it. Now what the book said to do was to select both rows. You can certainly do that. I'm just going to select this second row and I'll choose center right there as well and that will center those items also. You're also told in step four to find the 710 AM cell in the leave column. And what we're going to do is use the mouse to drag and select the cells in the leave, arrive, percent off, and trip number columns, just the text because the, because the headings are already selected. And we'll choose center there as well and that will center 
that information and sometimes that makes it a little bit neater to read so notice that the cities over here are still left aligned but everything else has been centered we can do some things to the entire table bottom of page 280 and if I click the entire table right here just click anywhere in there I can go to the table menu and I can change the font right here too. Now this one in Expression Web 3 it says to choose select the table menu point to select. Now we don't have the word select in this version of Expression Web. Expression Web 3 apparently did have it but if I wanted to change the font here I've got a feeling I can go to table properties and choose table. I'm seeing if I can get this right here. I don't see it at the moment but there's probably something here that will allow me to change the font for the table and I'm probably going to have to find where that is in this particular version of Expression Web. I'm not seeing it at the moment but I'm going to look for it and see if I can find it. I do not see it in cell properties. What I'm looking for ladies and gentlemen, you may find it before I do in this version of Expression Web, I'm looking for the font properties. Now there's table properties right there where I've got the alignment and the word float. I'm not seeing the font change right here so I've got a feeling I'm probably going to have to select all the contents of the table. That would be my guess at the moment. So I'm going to see if I can select everything in the table. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Select the whole table. Go to the default font. This would be my guess here. Go to where it says default font and I got a little bit of a delay on my screen. I'm going to choose Arial right here and see if that will take care of the font selection for me, which it does. To change an individual entry, I would click in that cell, select the entire text, which is Winter is Special, bottom of page 281. I can choose font from the list or I can go to Format and choose Font. And I'm going to select right there Bold Italic which is in the font style right by itself. In the size list, I'll choose extra large to make that heading a little better. That's the X large. The color will be navy. That's in that first row that we did earlier. In the effects, we'll make it all capital letters by checking that little chat box. And you got the little preview down here in the center to show you everything. The bold italics, the extra large, the navy color, the small caps. When I click OK, that one selection, winter is special, will be selected there. I'm going to go to the second row and again I'm assuming I would select everything like I would in Microsoft Word. Again go to Format Font. This is a little different from what your book does for Expression Web 3 and I'll choose Large right there. Hopefully this is not difficult. Choose Large for the color or for the font size. The color will be Maroon which is the fourth one on the top row. All caps once again. Strong is a special word in the HTML code for bold. You can think of it as bold if you like. And when I click OK, these headings should have a different color and they should be in all caps. I'm going to select the cells in the second row again. They're already selected, in fact, from before because that got that little greenish thing on there. And I'm going to choose Format, Borders, and Shading and you can choose either the borders tab or the shading tab to make whatever changes you want. I'm going to choose shading as the book says, page 283, step 3. The background color will choose teal, which is the last one in the second row. The foreground color, which will be the color of the text I do believe, is going to be white. and click OK and that gives you a little bit of a preview right there and we have these colors. So hopefully this gives you an option. You can even do a caption in here if you wanted to as mentioned on page 284. I'll stop at this point because now we've done everything we need to do with the table and in the next video which continues in this chapter we'll be looking at the CSS layouts with it. So hopefully this has helped you out.